I do not take it lightly when I receive something from the Lord. I take it with a high level of sobriety because I fear the Lord. He's my Father in heaven, but I fear Him. And I know one day I'll be held accountable anytime I indicate a direction or a word that He's given. So you might take it seriously, but believe me, I take it with a deep level of sobriety. On Friday at about 11 minutes after 11, and that happened to be a significant time for me based on if you've heard the prophetic words I shared on the New Year's Eve service for this year, 11-11, God spoke to my heart. He said, tell my people, my children, that on this Sunday, this day, I would pour out upon them a big provision, a big provision upon every son every daughter, and they will know that I'm a good father that ministers to their very deepest needs. He told me to speak that, to share that with you. I fired off a arena blast email, so many of you received that, and I know you're here. God did something so beautiful in the first service, and I know he's present with us to do it in this service. So I encourage you, have an open heart and open ear, and let him deposit into you what I believe he wants to first speak, and then he wants you to experience. I don't know what that pressing need might be in your life. I don't know where you need that place of provision. I'm gonna invite you maybe to elevate it to an even higher level, because there might be a provision he has for you that supersedes your need and transcends your present situation where God wants to give you something that's going to empower you to be such a resource and a help to others. I don't know where it's going to land, but I know he will. It doesn't matter if you're close or distant with him right now. It doesn't matter if you're cold as ice or really on fire for God. He's ready to meet you right where you are at. He loves you. He's a good father and wants to speak this into you. The scripture regarding provision is coming from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. This is a bread not for tomorrow, but for today, in the immediate present right here and now. So have an anticipation and expectation. Have a faith in your heart, not in me, but in God, and trust his character, his very disposition, his willingness to reach to you with his hand and his heart and to touch you right where you are at. In your own mind, in your own spirit, you know the pulsating need, but also the reality of what God wants to give to you above and beyond that as he apportions his will to you. Now, let me just say this about the word provision. You know, provision is something that, yes, God wants to give to us. It could be in the context of your life financially. It might be provision of courage to be a better, stronger witness for Christ, and not to be intimidated by someone's intellect or countenance or status, but that you would boldly and courageously move forward with the good news. It might be a provision for your marriage because it's spinning out of control and has taken a nosedive potentially into divorce. It might be a provision, yes, in your own physical body for good health so that you can be the temple, the tabernacle, the tent that will house what God has and to bring that to someone else. So he wants your body physiologically to be in good shape, to be strong, to be stable, to be healthy. You might need a touch from him emotionally to have a stability that enables you to reach and touch someone else. I don't know where it's at, but a provision can come in a relationship, in your singleness, maybe giving you strength to resist a persistent habitual temptation in your life that no longer will you succumb to the envy and jealousy that robs and steals from you. No longer succumbing to putting your eyes where they ought not to be in the context of lust. 
Not allowing yourself to be gripped by a destructive anger or an arrogance or a pride. I don't know where it's at, but God wants to give you a provision and empowerment and enabling to be able to say yes to him and no to a temptation that persistently knocks at the door and you find yourself opening that door. God wants to provide for you. Be open and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive the provision that you might want to give to me physically with a touch of healing. Financially, in my arena of investments, I receive your provision in this relationship. Maybe it's as a parent in the rearing and the discipling of your children and you're just frustrated, you're tired, you're weary, and you just don't have the energy as a mom or a dad to disciple that child anymore. Or maybe they've become wayward, they've drifted and gone astray. And you're saying, oh God, I want you to move in my son and daughter's life. They're grown up, they're away. I can't grab them or grip them with my thinking or my own theology or principles or core values or convictions. They're far beyond me, but they're not beyond you. Lord, how wonderful if you would pour out such provision this day that my son and daughter would return to you or for you, again, as a parent, that you'd all of a sudden have a new energy when your little one who might be wild and running about and seems unruly and you just don't have energy anymore and it's actually impacting your marriage, that all of a sudden God provides something that empowers you, enables you to be the better parent that he wants you to be. Now, provision, as you look at that word, pro-vision. I guess the question you have to ask yourself is what is the vision that I have for these areas of my life? What's the intent? What's the motive? What's pushing me to lift this request to God? What is the vision that I have for my health? What's the vision that I have for my finances? What's the vision that I have for my marriage, my singleness, my mores, my ethics, my morality, my career? my ambitions, my hopes, my dreams. What's my vision? You see, when you look at the word pro to vision, pro as a preposition means for, for something. As an adverb, it it means in favor of. As a noun, it means the best, a pro, an expert in that given field. Pro, I'm for this. I'm in favor of this. This is what's best. So take a moment of introspection. Take a moment of having some self inventory and say, is this something that God would be for, in favor of, and define as the very, very, very best for my life? This vision that I have for my own physical body for my intellect, for my career, my marriage. Is it noteworthy? Is it in harmony with God's will and his intent? You see, I wanna be healthy, not just so I can be healthy. I wanna be healthy, I wanna be healed so that I can live out, not just the philosophy of life, but as the very conviction of my life each day that I have the opportunity to reach to someone and bless them help them, encourage them. And I know that my temple needs to be strong. It needs to be stable in order to reach. So I say, Lord, the vision I have for my health is not just a blessing to me personally, but I want to have the ability to reach and help others. And I need a good, healthy body to do that. I want my intellect to be sharp. I have a vision for my education and my intellectual growth because I want to have the ability to bridge a conversation with anyone, educated or uneducated. Help me, God. I want a good, strong, healthy marriage, a vision that it would not just be a happy place, but it would be a holy place, and again, that you would use me and Diane to reach out and touch other couples. I want children and my offspring to be healthy and strong, I have a vision for them to be used by you. You see, what is the vision that you have? Now, don't come under a guilt trip. Don't start beating yourself up. 
This is an opportunity for refinement, correction, shifting, realignment. So let him do it. Just lift your heart and say, yes, I've come with an expectation, anticipation this day for the Lord to provide for me big provision. It's his will. It's his desire. It burns within my soul because I heard his voice and I know he wanted me to speak that over you. But it causes us to step back and say, okay, in this area of my life, this desire for provision, what is my vision for this area in my life? And would God be for it, in favor of it, and is it the very best? And if it isn't, I yield it to you, Lord. Maybe the reason I wanted to gain a whole lot of money is to bring more pleasure into my life. Well, forgive me, cleanse me. Thank you for correcting me. But today, I believe that there are gonna be some of you that God is going to deposit in a huge, big provision financially. But he's looking for you to steward that with his wisdom and with his heart. He might give that, I don't know, through what means, but I believe he's going to do that. And it'll unfold the beginning of this week and into months to come. And you'll be astounded by the outpouring of finances that are going to begin to pour into your hands. But listen, you've got to set your heart now to say, God, I want you to be confident. I want to be found trustworthy that what you get to me can flow through me. What you get to me can flow through me. I had a friend of mine, college, he said, Czar, I want to become a multimillionaire by the time I turn 30 years old. But I stepped back and said, well, what's your motive? What's your intent? Where's, what's the why that pushes the what forward? What's your why? Why? He said, well, because I want to have a great life, a whole lot of fun, a ton of pleasure, and be able to get anything I want, and no one can control me because I'll have a ton of money. I said, I, I, I would invite you to bring your heart before God and ask him to alter that motive and intent. He may very well want to give you a whole lot to be a tremendous resource, but God forbid that that would be the motivation of your heart. God forbid that that would be the why behind the what. That you would say, oh Lord, provide these finances. So yes, needs in my life can be taken care of, but I can be a tremendous conduit, a resource for your kingdom and the advancement of your cause and your will. What's your vision? What is your vision? Is it something that you want to be able to say, Lord, I want my marriage. I want my health. I want my children. I want my career. I want these areas in my life. This is the vision I have for them. I want it to be in harmony with your vision. I want you to put your stamp of approval and say, yes, I'm pro that. It's the best. I'm in favor of it. I'm for it. So just bring that before him. Say, this is why I want to be healthy, Lord. This is why I need this in happening in my life because I know it's a daily bread that you want to provide for me. You see, God invites us to come to the right table when it comes to provision. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it speaks about the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Yes, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as he penned 1 Corinthians 10, articulated it in that way. He made a very defining, conceptual, biblical distinction between the two, polar opposites, the antithesis of one another. Here is the table of the Lord. Here is the table of demons. Food and resources will be provided. Here you will find at the table of the Lord authentic satisfaction and fulfillment that will run deep and it will go all of your life. The longevity of your life will be enhanced because you've eaten of the meal he, the Lord, has provided. But you have to come to his table. The other table is the table of demons. Oh, they might be couched in different ways and covered. And there is an aspect of them that might be very inviting, but it's temporary, it says in the book of Hebrews 11. And so we need to know that this is, it's a satisfaction, but it's artificial. It's a fulfillment, but it's artificial. It's not authentic, and it won't last. It won't last. Provision comes from the Lord. You come to his table. You do it his way, according to his will. And you say, Lord, I'm open to the provision that you want to give, but I'm coming to the right table, the table of the Lord. And I want to receive that which you have for me that is authentic, genuine, deep, and real, long-lasting, that will impact me and others 
because it's a good meal. It's a godly meal. It's a meal that will empower me, energize me to do your will, to manifest it, put it on display, demonstrate it unto others. So in this, this day, Lord, grant unto us that full, great provision, that daily bread that you want to bestow upon our life. I think there's some doors we have to open, and we're going to do it together corporately. When it comes to God's provision, I believe it's an empowerment to receive everything he has to do his will, not yours. So, Lord, I want everything I need to do your will. The very first door I believe we have to open is just kind of pattern F after the Lord's Prayer is we have to say, God, I want you to be my father. You are the source and the provider. I'm not going to succumb to the temptation in our society to be independent and self-reliant. I'm going to recognize that apart from you, I can't do anything. And I know that when I'm connected to you, I can do all things. I'm going to acknowledge and declare, you are my father, the source now, for those of you that are believers, maybe this needs to go at a deeper level. Maybe it needs to be a more profound revelation, an epiphany moment, that you've been looking too much to yourself for the solution, and you need to lift your eyes up and say, you are my Father in heaven. You are the source and the provider, and I will look to you for help and your intervention. He might use natural means. He might establish a very pragmatic uh, structure and, and strategy. That's fine. But he is the source. And you come to him as your father in heaven, the provider. Maybe some of you might be here and would say, I don't have God as my father. Well, aren't we all, in one sense, children of God? I mean, that's what's in vogue I know and understand that in the broadest sense, he's the creator, we are all his creation. In that context, we're the children of God. Yet Jesus, he answers this question very clearly in the Gospel of John chapter 8 and verse 41 through 44. Now many times we think Jesus speaks just sweet words that land on your heart and put a smile on your countenance. Sometimes he presses in with a very strong word. And here is one of those moments when he responds to the issue of, are we all God's children? The Pharisees were belittling him, mocking him. And in the context of the statement, they, the Pharisees, said to him, we were not born of fornication. What a direct assault against the virgin birth. They were mocking how he came into the world. We were not born of fornication, as if to say the way you were, Jesus. We have one Father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you'd love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. Wow. He made it pretty clear that all of us are not children of God. We have to come into a relationship with him. And that's why the scripture says in John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, 12 and 13, again expressed by the Apostle John, but as many as received him, who's him? Jesus. To them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of flesh, not of man, but of God. Born again by Almighty God, coming into a living relationship with God, and now because of that, through Christ, you are defined as his son and daughter. There's something intimate about the term father. Actually, those who've studied the development, the progression of human language in various groups, they discover the fact that the word father was very unique because almost every language group, be it the Indo-European, Indian, if it was in the Sanskrit or the Greek or the Latin, as it came into the English, into the French, 
and to the Spanish, there was a consistent development of the pronunciation and the structure of it. So they said, wow, just in the mere study of the word father and the etymology of it, and as it, uh, the derivation of it, as it evolved through the centuries, through various languages, there was such a consistency, it almost makes us form the conclusion that every language spoken came from one original language. Secular individuals forming a conclusion simply on the use of the word father. How we all long, God, I want you to be my father. Let that be the first door we open. Can you join with me right now just in prayer as we do that? Heavenly Father, we open this door. We declare corporately and individually, we want you to be our Father, the source, the provider in every area of our life. We look to you. And those of you that don't know him, just pray this prayer. Almighty God, I come to you. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I receive you into my heart to be my Savior, the forgiver of my sins, and to be the Lord, the ultimate leader of my life. To as many as receive you, you give the power to become a son and daughter. I receive the bread of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. We open that door together, amen? We open the door to you, Lord, this day, a day where you've declared you want to pour out great provision. The second door that I invite you to open is very simple. It's saying, God, I want your ways. Not my ways, I want your ways. The broadest application of that is to say, I want the very pattern, the manner by which you want me to live, the core values that you want me to have, the perspective the perception that you want me to have, the, the priorities that you want to establish in my life. Basically, it's the track that is laid before you and before me that the locomotive gets on. It's the heartbeat of God. See, when we say, your kingdom come, we want the nature, the attributes, the disposition, the character of the king. So it's an invitation to say, Lord, I open wide the door and say, I want your ways in my life. I want it to be the very practice of my life, the very nature of my life. It's saying God's way of doing life. I want it. So that's going to translate then into what I define as a need in my life. I want to do it your way with my singleness, with my morals, my ethics. I want to do it your way with my aspirations and dreams and career and ministry. I want to do it your way with my marriage and my parenting and my rearing of children or as a grandparent. I want to do it your way with my management of time or finances or other relationships in the workplace as an employee or an employer. I want to do it your way, Lord. I want it to be the pattern that you establish, the values that I need to hold to. That needs to be our prayer. Oh God, I want to do it your way. You know, there's a song that became very famous. This is not an attack against Frank Sinatra, but it was his theme song. I'm sure you've heard it. I've enjoyed it many times until I stopped and really looked at the lyrics. Listen to a few of them. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, it was my way. Again, with no critique of Frank Sinatra, I would say, boy, I would never want that to be my theme song. I'd like to shift the lettering a bit and say, thy way. I did it thy way, Yahweh. <laughs> we'll make a new song. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So let's just stop for a moment and do that right now. Almighty God, we want your way. Your way with our time and our life and our health and our finances, in our marriage, in our singleness, in our present, in our future. We want your way. We open wide the door with our hearts sincere. Your way. Thy way. Jesus' name. Third door I'd like to invite us to open is to say, I want your will. Will is a little distinct from way because it presses in now. It's the local motive actually on the track. It's not just the heart. I want the pattern that I need to live by or the mores that I need to live by or the priorities. Now it's the very, the very expression, the tangible, concrete expression of life choices and decisions. Your will, very specific, very concrete. It is not simply the heart, now it's actually your hands and your feet. It's you saying, Lord, I want to do your will. I want it to manifest in the choices that I make, the very conduct, behavior, and actions of my life. I want your will. That's a big door to open up. I want your will to be done in every area of my life. If I were just to give another expression of it, is to see that as saying, Lord, yes, I want your ways. I want the right attitude, beliefs, and creed and priorities, but I want your will to manifest through me. That's the hands. That's the feet. That's the action, behavior, conduct, and the very practice of your life. That we would say, Lord, I want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Can we pray that together now? Heavenly Father, I know I'm in concert here, in agreement here, with every single person. We open the door by saying to you sincerely, I want, we want, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. I've seen in my life when I do his will, when I do his will, I also then receive more provision, more provision. I receive mental, emotional, physical strength. I receive so much. It is not, it's actually the, a paradox that as you work, you gain more energy. It's not depleted. It's not diminished. It's multiplied. It increases. And that's what he said to us in John 4 and verse 34. My food is to do the will of my Father. In other words, it's going to become sustenance to me. It's going to become strength to me. So do his will and you'll find more provision. Bite into that fruit of doing his will and you'll find seed, more provision. When you bite into that apple or that peach or that grape, you find seed on the inside. The principle of multiplication, greater provision, because you've chosen to do something. You're eating of his will and moving forward. Now here's the beautiful promise. When we do that, God, you're my father. I want you as my father. I open that door. God, I want your kingdom, your ways to be done in my life. I open that door. God, I want your will to be done in my life. Let your will be done specifically on earth as it is in heaven. Then what does Jesus say? Then lift that prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Grant unto us that full provision, that meal, that bread that is needed in order to embark on the journey of today and tomorrow and the days to come. Again, that bread for you might be the bread of finances, the bread of healing, the bread of peace of mind, the bread that would remove the torment, a bread of deliverance for you. I don't know what it will be, but I know that God can suddenly come upon you with life. I know as a young man with those who had mentored me, they told me, always look for someone to help and encourage, inspire, reach out to and pray for. So they gave me a very specific application of that. They told me to go hang out at an emergency room, so I did. 17 years old, I'd be sitting at St. James Hospital there in Chicago Heights, Illinois, awaiting for people to come in 
wondering what pulsating need that they would be coming in with. It was there that I learned one of the biggest lessons of my life. I wasn't involved in any kind of medical assistance. I couldn't do that. I would just hear someone weeping or crying. They'd be there for hours, so I'd be able to go up to them and just say, can I, can I pray for you? And they'd always say, yeah, that'd be great, thank you. But I'll never forget when I was standing in there and I felt like the Lord said, I don't want you to do anything, but I want you to see this and it'll impact the rest of your life. This precious mom and daughter came in. They were weeping, hysterically crying. I, could, I, I just went closer to overhear what they were saying to one another, not eavesdropping, but really wanting to know what was going on. And I could hear them saying to one another, I can't believe it. He was just out there. He was mowing the lawn. I can't believe it. And I heard the daughter just saying, oh, I don't want to lose my daddy. And the wife saying, I don't want to lose my husband. And I felt so bad. My heart was broken. And then the doctor came out and he looked at them both and I could see on his face. And he said to them, I'm really sorry. We did everything we could. He had a massive heart attack and he didn't survive. And I, I saw the mother just collapse and the daughter, they had lost husband and father. And I looked at that and I said, oh God. And that's when he said to me, Gary, if death can be that sudden, then I want you to understand so can life. I want you to be an instrument, an ambassador of my life to others. I know sometimes we engage in everyday topics with individuals, and I'm not saying ignore that. We don't want to be socially inappropriate. You want to pre create points of connection conversationally with someone. You want them to know you're normal. But let me tell you, yeah, because some of you aren't, I'm sorry. But eventually you want to get to that higher conversation about the condition of their soul. You want to get to that place where now you have the bread of courage and boldness that overcomes those fears that intimidate you, paralyze you, and shut you down. You want to be able to say, look, if death can be that sudden, ripping life from someone, taking the, mom, taking the father and taking the, the, the husband, then I want to be that agent, that instrument, that ambassador by God to bring life suddenly into a conversation, to, to bring up the topic of the gospel and eternal life and the promise of heaven through Jesus Christ. There can be a new boldness that comes over you this day as a strong provision from Almighty God. Listen, I don't know where it's going to land. It might be for you. Listen, I need the provision of really knowing I am fully forgiven I want to receive that today, that no longer am I tormented by condemnation and guilt and being paralyzed by that. It might be for you to receive the full provision of a willingness. I thought this would do with my finances. Well, I think it will, but it's bigger than that. Maybe it's God giving you full provision to release forgiveness on someone that has harmed you, injured you, done you wrong, and you can't get beyond that. And today, today, you can say with an open heart and open hands, Lord, pour out that full provision into my heart and life so I'd be willing to forgive. Maybe it's victory over a temptation, as I said earlier, that keeps pounding on you and God wants to give you tremendous victory that no longer do you keep drinking and getting drunk. No longer do you lust and potentially fall into adultery. No longer is your tongue smitten by lying and profanity, but you're free to declare his praises now with your tongue. No longer are you a captive of that anger that becomes so volatile that it intimidates others and it scares yourself. You wonder what your potential is in that area. God wants to give you the full provision of victory. Maybe your mind is tormented by anxiety, stress, even wanting to take your life. Today, God wants to give you full provision, the provision of being delivered from evil, the snake and the viper, the scorpion that torments you every day, that visits you early in the morning. The Lord says, I want to give you the provision of the bread of deliverance from this day forward, that no longer will you be a captive or bound or ensnared by that. Let the Lord give you what is really needed. I'm gonna invite you now to stand up for the next 15, 20 minutes of our service. We're gonna make absolute room for the Spirit of God to move on you and to move on me. I'm gonna ask you again, say, Lord, I open that door. You are my Father in heaven. 
Let your kingdom, your ways be done in my life. Let your will be done in my life, in every area of my life, with my time and relationships, finances and health, present and future, in areas of bondage. I open myself to the fulfillment of your promise for this day. For you said, on this day, Gary, tell my people, tell my children, I'm going to pour out upon them great, big, strong provision. Be open to what the Lord wants to do right now in your life. Don't leave this moment. Let God do it. You've been struggling with suicidal thoughts. Today, God is going to impact you, not with death, but life, life, life. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. The mighty name of Jesus. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You, Lord Jesus, rule over all. We have all that we need to do your will. Full provision bestowed on every single life that is here. As we were lifting up the name of Jesus, the Lord flashed into my spirit and into my heart the book of Acts chapter 1, and the declaration that he would clothe us in power from on high. The fullness of the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God. That great provision of God Almighty into your heart and into my heart, into our lives. That he would clothe us in the Holy Spirit. That he would clothe us in power. That we'd have the full provision of the promise of the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. His love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and meekness and self-control. That you'd be baptized and filled with the Spirit of God and the gifts of the Spirit would be a portion unto you that you'd have provision to reach and help others, not just in the natural, but with the power display of the kingdom, that you would have the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits and the gift of prophecy and interpretation of prophecy and the gift of tongues and the gift of faith and of healing and of miracles that the Lord provides that unto us as his children. Would you say in your heart, Lord, I receive this. I receive it as the power that is needed to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the great I am. He is the great I am almighty God. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8, Jesus said this to his disciples and he says it to you and to me right now. Freely you've received, now freely give. Freely you've received, now freely give. And he said to them and he says it to us, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, now freely give. Wow, what a, what a great descent of his spirit to give you the bread of power. Not that you would become arrogant or prideful, that all of us would decrease, he would increase, but he would be seen through the manifestation, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit in power so that you are sent into your sphere of influence with a power that transcends your own, that God would give you the full provision. Even now, may you be clothed in his power so you could be obedient to his command, his very mandate that he speaks now to us. Go, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you've received. Now freely give. We receive this, O oh Lord. We receive this empowerment. Clothe us this day for the days to come in your power. We praise you, Lord. You are our Father in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Grant us this day that daily bread. And Lord, we receive your forgiveness and we release your forgiveness. 
Lead us so we don't enter into temptation. Deliver us from all of the works of hell and darkness. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. You are in charge. Your providence and your sovereignty rules over all. You are our Father and we are your sons and daughters, anointed and commissioned by you, full of your spirit, full of your provision, blessed to be a blessing, to reach with your hands, to walk with your feet, to speak with your voice, and to have your heart, that in this you will be made known on this earth. And we thank you for your presence, O oh Lord. Now I believe God is ready to give the bread of healing, that a healing river would flow among us. God would touch you even in your physical need, that the Lord would touch you with his healing power and his healing virtue. For you, that is the big provision God has for you right now, not tomorrow, right now. Daily bread for you, bread for his children of healing. As we sing this song, I'm just going to encourage you just to open your hearts. Let the hands that are laid on you be the very hands of Jesus. May it be an impartation of his healing virtue into your body over your bones and muscles and blood and every organ, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your brain, your kidneys, every part of your body to be impacted by his healing virtue. That your vision would be, God, I want to prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers so I can carry the gospel to those that you want me to bring it to with strength and with good health. May the healing river of the Lord now begin to flow down every aisle, throughout every pew, here in the main level, in the balcony, the healing of Jesus Christ, the healing virtue of God, provision for you this day as God your Father says to you, I love you and I touch you with my power and my healing. We praise you, Lord. We welcome and receive this. We receive this, O oh Lord. We receive your great provision in our lives. Every single one of us every single one of us together as one family. I'm going to invite everyone, if you would be so kind, don't worry about germs. Join hands with one another all across the aisle, all the way up there in the balcony as well. Just join hands with one another. Our vision here is we're a family that loves, a team that is connected and an army that advances. That we want to love God and love one another. We want to be connected to one another in meaningful and fruitful ministry. And we want to advance the kingdom of God clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit. God will surely equip us to do his will in this. So we're gonna to sing together a simple chorus that we're all familiar with, hallelujah, which is a declaration of praise unto God. Let's do this together to seal what we've all experienced here as a family together. You could just lift your hands up a little bit. Remember there's some that are a little shorter next to you, so don't lift them real high, okay? Just a little bend in the elbow is sufficient. And let's sing this together. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. Hallelujah. 
we are your children, sons and daughters. Hallelujah. 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 Now may the blessing of the Lord be upon you, his full and big provision into your life, impacting you now and tomorrow in this week and months to come. And as the Lord has blessed you, may you be so equipped to be a blessing unto others. I pray this now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Would you say, I receive that, we receive that, amen. Give a hug to one another. Oh, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord.